Hey Croc Posse, Aunt Lou here, and today we are going to be making the Crock Pot Maple Roast. Oh, we're having a whole lot of fun. You are gonna love it. Hi, welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy. And Aunt Lou. And today we're cooking another dish from RecipesThatCrock.com down here in sunny Florida because where better to spend the winter, right? <laughs> no more 20 degree weather for a little while. It's kind of no. nice. But we want to have something hot and ready for tomorrow. And the reason we say tomorrow is because this is a longer recipe. Not so much the longer cooking as the prep for it. You're going to marinate it. Yes. And you so. can do this right away and have it. I'm sure it would be good. But you know what? If you let something sit for a little longer, it's going to be better. Oh, let this stuff soak in. And what we're talking about on this crock pot roast are the following ingredients. One, the star of the show. Let's get that out of the way right now. Me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Uh, other than this hunk of beef, you want this hunk of beef. We have a giant chuck roast. Now, Lou, you've got a recipe on the site called maple brisket. Uh-huh. It's the exact same recipe except for the hunk of meat. Mm-hmm. Not meat. Oh We're talking goodness. about this. We've got a giant chuck roast here. Mama got this the other day. I'm going to say that's every bit of four pounds. That's a, that's a, that's a, we this is going to feed a family for sure. So you got your great big hunk of meat. Yep. Oh my goodness. And then Enough. you also want to have, and this is where you want to grab that camera. Okay. You want to have one teaspoon of ground red pepper one tablespoon of salt, and one half teaspoon of regular ground pepper. Now, Kim, I don't know what dot this was on, but it looks, I'm gonna say about the medium dot. So, <laughs> ground up, so grind up some pepper there, about a quarter teaspoon or, or a half teaspoon of that. And then you also want to have olive oil, two yep. tablespoons of olive oil, one half cup of maple circle. Oh you want to have one quarter cup of molasses, you want to have two tablespoons of brown light sugar. brown sugar. You want one tablespoon of tomato puree, tomato paste. Paste. Tomato, it says paste right there. Is that Italian? Oh my goodness. Tomato paste. You're full okay? of it today. I, I, I am. <laughs> but that's because I can't. Uh -huh. uh, so you got your tablespoon of tomato paste. You want one quarter cup of apple juice. And you want two cloves of minced garlic. We're going to use, use yeah, we usually use, like, you know, we usually use the freeze-dried stuff. We can't find the freeze-dried stuff down here, so we're uh -oh. going to use about two teaspoons, and it's going to be to taste. It's to whatever you taste. If you don't really care for garlic, don't use it or back off. If you want more, I'm Go not going to stop you. I'm kind of a garlic fan myself, so we're oh, just going to yeah. pretty much just do two squirts of that, two teaspoons. Okay. So first thing you need to do, get yourself a bag. Do you notice there's no slow cooker up here? We're not going to eat this like sushi. Okay, don't, we're not that way. This is not going to be roast tartare, but what we're gonna do is prep this for you and then show you what we do later. So in a baggie. The bag. This baggie, we set it aside, because that's our vessel for a minute. First thing we wanna do is I'm gonna take my peppers and my salt. Stir them up. Make them all even. Just like that. Yep. Looks like that. Looks like I just okay. went and did this. That's oh, all I did. Is, is that what you did? I did this. Are you sure? Uh, wait, no, I did this. Wait, what did you do? Are you I did sure? That. Now we're good. Now what I want to do is I got evenly coat it. Make sure mm. you definitely touch it in on the fat there, rub it in on that fat. And then you take your other half of said mixture and you and it do it on the other side. And if it's windy, you want to get closer to it. No, it's 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 Monday right now. Ha ha ha. Actually, it's New Year's Eve. So by the time you see this, I don't know when it'll be, but Happy New Year. And then I want to make sure and use up all of that seasoning mixture. that blew everywhere. I'm not going to pick up what blew out into the yard, but I'll get everything, try to get everything off of my cutting board here, just to make sure that meat gets all seasoned up like that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be pretty when it's done. Pretty and red. Now, drop your camera. Don't drop the camera. It's kind of expensive. And we're going to put this in that bag. I finally have a job to do. I got laundry. No thanks. All right, just set that aside. And then I'm going to go wash my hands. We'll come back and snap and show you the rest of it in three, two, one. Say, hi, Crock Posse. Hi, Crock Posse. This is Ryder, my oldest. Ah, look at that. 
clean yeah. hands. Ta -da. It's magic. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to take the rest of our ingredients and put them in the bowl. So we want two tablespoons of olive oil, one half cup of maple syrup. I did not grab a half cup. We're going to cheat. This is a liquid vessel, and I always get yelled at from Chris whenever I use solids in a liquid vessel. But you know what? She's not here right now. So we'll grab a half cup. And you know what? It is like food science, but it's not like science science. It doesn't have to be exactly exact. That's about a half cup right there. Put that in there. Mm -hmm. You want a quarter cup of molasses. Now, again, I'm not going to be too precise on this. Oh, molasses no, is good. good. Quarter cup right oh, about wow. there. You want two tablespoons of olive oil. right in the same bowl that I have my spices in. Be just fine. They're going on the same row, so it's all right. That's right. All right, and now we want one tablespoon of tomato paste. Right there is about a tablespoon. And then we want our garlic. garlic. And I'm just going to do a couple good squirts of this. There's about a teaspoon. There's about a teaspoon. Ooh, I can and smell it over a here. a little more, I don't care because it's going to make it taste good. Yeah, there's and plenty then, of meat for that. Apple juice. Apple juice. Any kind you want, doesn't matter. Yeah, you got the good stuff. What is that? How much was that? It's supposed to be one quarter cup. So not much, but this just is just going to add. Just enough to get that citrus in there to make it and that liquid nice to distribute. and tender. Just like that. So we got our black pepper, our salt. Our red pepper, our brisket, of course, because he is the hunk of meat who is the not star of the show. Brisket. Or not brisket, that's oh right, because we're looking at the brisket recipe. Chuck, we're not using brisket, we're using Chuck, the other hunk of meat. And then we got our molasses, we got our brown sugar, we got our tomato paste, we got our apple juice, we got our garlic. We are good to go. And all I want to do is stir it up real good. Okay. Carefully. Which is another good thing for that, um, that apple juice to be in there, because that's going to help break down. Everything. All the sugars and everything. Ooh. Dude, that smells, that's gonna smell real good on that roast. Oh, that hey, smells. Show them this. Oh. You wanna see? We'll just break up that garlic a little bit. Kinda get everything all mixed up. Just like that. And then the final part of your prep other than having patience. It's poured in on top of your roast. It's a windy day. Mm -hmm. Hope it didn't blow on me. Now, while I let mine marinate, I, um, I turned it like probably three times. And so that way it was on um, each side. Ooh, there oh, went bike the bike. Fell over. Um, it's windy in Florida. So, uh, you want to make sure that it's nice and sealed um, so that it doesn't spill out. But, like, that way, um, all your marinade isn't just a one piece of the, or part of the meat. And so you can just flip it a couple of times to make sure it all gets nice and marinated. Yep. And just like that. We're going to set this in the refrigerator for at least two hours. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to go the full 24 because I really want this flavor to soak into that meat. What we're going to do, because all we're going to do is take this out of the bag, dump it straight into a slow cooker, and we're going to set it on low for... You know what else we forgot to do? One thing I forgot to mix in it was your maple syrup. One half it's cup. It's called maple beef, or maple... Syrup. See, oh you goodness. can't even say it now. Huh. And it's okay, because I will take that and toss it in a bag. You don't have to be perfect like me. You can make mistakes nah. too. And then we'll get it sealed up and I'll give it a good mix. But we're going to take this and we're going to let it sit for 24 hours. Like Lou said, maybe flip it a couple times. Make sure everything just let gravity do its thing. Flip it over, let gravity do its thing. Uh -huh. Let it soak into that meat. We're going to toss it in a slow cooker tomorrow for six to eight hours on low. And then when you come back and, and see us, For those of you who are asking done. or who always wonder about can you cook it on high, beef like this, I really don't recommend it because 
the low and slow is going to take even the toughest portion of meat and make it nice and tender and just amazing. Yeah. So low and slow, this people do not do high. That and these cuts of meat are kind of expensive. I mean, they're not super high. Chuck is usually a really good medium as far as buying a good piece of beef without mm -hmm. spending a whole lot of money. But still, this is an investment. So if you're going to invest your money in something, invest your time in it too. Cook it low and slow. It's going to break down any you of those tough fibers. You will not be sorry. And we'll show you in three, two, one. And now we are back. Let's recap what we did. We put all the stuff together in the roast. In a bag. In a bag. And we put it in a fridge and let it go for about half a day. Flipped it over on the other side. Let it go for a full 24 hours to let all that goodness soak into the meat. And then about 10 o'clock this morning, because I got up a little late this <laughs> morning, I tossed the roast in. It cooked on low for a full eight hours. Mm -hmm. I heard the beep. I unplugged it right away because I didn't want to set it on that warmer, that warmer and dry it out. Right. And now we don't even know what it looks like, but the we're about to find out. Are in, folks. So let us get prepared. Let us get our little camera ready. Oh, and if you happen to see this hand in the shot, um, she did know, not murder a smurf. My nails are not dirty dirty. They're just dyed because me and the kids Aww. did some tie dyeing. Oh Not that way. No, we did some tie dyeing this morning and I've, I never can use the gloves the whole time But anyway, <laughs> I scrubbed and scrubbed and this is what's left. So without further ado The big reveal look at that piece of meat right there I just want to reach in and touch it But I know I won't be able to because I'll get my hand smacked with a spoon mm -hmm. But I want you to push that down and see how tender that meat is. Oh, told ya. We were discussing that is what, eight hours. what we were going to use to cut it. And I told them that we should just be Look able to that. use this oh, spatula. Oh my goodness. Look at that piece of meat right there. Yummer, yummer. Oh, you know what? Finally, I'm the second best looking hunk of meat in this uh -huh. place. Fork my oh, ear. Oh, thank you. Now, we could tell you how good it looks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that fork goes right. Oh. It's, gonna, it's, it's kind of hard to get a hold of. It really is. We'll have to push that up on top of it. Yeah, that just came unplugged about 10 minutes ago, so it'll be hot. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm still trying to use a fork. Who cares? It's my house. I can do what I want. Mm. Oh, my God. Right? <laughs> That's like I almost want to bite my fingers. <laughs> okay. Tastes like beef. It tastes like a slow-cooked chuck roast. But... There is a sweetness. It's not like a barbecue sweetness, like over the top tanginess. You taste the meat with a little bit of sweetness behind it. There's some heat behind it. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of heat, but it's there just to warm you up while you're eating well, it. Well, and that maple, it just it mm. complements the beef in a way that I never dreamed of it. I would have never thought of maple syrup on cow. But it's good. <laughs> here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up here. Okay. Whoa. You know those times when I have to run up here in a confessional and tell you make that? Make that. <laughs> look at that. I wish I could show you better. I wish I had a better camera. But look at that. It's brown up here and it almost looks like it's got like a crust on it. And that's just for mm. where the marinade. That's where all the sugars mm -hmm. and everything is soaked into that meat for 24 hours and then got put on heat. But that meat is fall apart tender. It's juicy. Yep. And it's got so much flavor. You're gonna love it. And I can guarantee you something. We're getting ready with our family <laughs> of nine to take this outside. There will be nothing left in there when we get done. In fact, if we don't take it out there soon, they ain't gonna get none. So what we wanna say is thank you, Aunt Lou, for bringing us this recipe. You're welcome. It is super good, very good job. Also for you, we wanna thank you for watching. And if you like what you're seeing here, Give us a thumbs up down below if you have not become a member of the Crock Posse. Join us. Our fun-loving, slow-cooking, RV-traveling, foodie-loving, meat-eating family. We're a bunch of carnivores here on this channel. <laughs> click subscribe down below, and you're automatically a member of the Crock Posse. Also, click that little bell next to it called the... Dingling. And that dingling will let us know that you want to see the videos as soon as we put them up, and we'll shoot them right to you. And also, y'all, whatever you do, laugh often. Eat good food. And speak life. Bye. Bye, y'all. If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the Patreon.